I started on a series last week. I, we've ministered a lot of revelation knowledge and some deep things of the Bible. This is one thing that I believe is a priority. The title of my message is Identity Theft. This is the second part. Let me ask you a, a question before we get into the Word. Uh, did Jesus heal the sick? Did he cast out devils? Did he raise the dead? Did he feed like 5,000 men, their wives and their children, with a two-piece fish dinner? Amen. So Jesus performed a great deal of miracles. Amen. Well, what, the point I'm making in that is, is that we're about to get into some scripture to where Jesus gives us some commandments. And... Um, what I'm going to do is mainly speak from myself and my own experiences because I know it'll line up with everybody else's. But I've always uh, been kind of curious. Well, let me just read to you real quick. In uh, John chapter 14, uh, verse 12. You there, amen? The Bible says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, how many believers we got in the house? Amen? Amen? Raise your hand. Glory to God. Good. The rest of you, we're going to have an altar call here in a minute. <laughs> Bless God for you. All right, now, now what? Now, this is, let, let me first uh, m make this declaration. I'm not going to read some of these scriptures to try to put us down or make us feel depressed. But what I'm, go I'm going to read you some scriptures that Jesus has laid out for us. And we're not walking in these. And like you, I have asked some questions, why not? And uh, so th this is a whole part of getting into this series about identity theft. Uh, the devil has tried to steal our identity from day one of who we are. And we have allowed religion, denominations, and the world system define us who we are. We now let the world system identify us rather than being identified by the Word of God. So now let, 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 let's look into this in verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, this I will do, that my Father may be glorified in the Son. And if ye shall ask anything, everybody say anything, in my name, I believe he just said, I will do it. All right, verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Now, that scripture is a very important scripture because we have an advantage over the Old Testament saints because the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament would come and go as needed. But here today, we live on this side of the cross. We've got the Holy Spirit 24 hours a day, seven days a week. As much as you want the Holy Spirit, you've got it. When you want it, you've got it. It's there. It's available. So now watch this. It says, verse 17, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot read. Now, you notice that spirit of truth is with a capital S. Amen? So that's referring to the Holy Spirit. Now, when you see the word spirit and it's a small s, that's, that's speaking about the human spirit. No, 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 watch this with me very carefully. Uh, he says, even the spirit, capital S, of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him, but ye know him. For he dwells with you and shall be where? Okay. I, I, I've, I've got to ask this question. Well, I tell you what. Go with me to Luke 10 before I ask that question. Luke chapter 10. See, I believe in getting into, yea, the deep things of God. Amen? 
I think it's time that we got out of this uh, Reader's Digest messages and we start giving the people of God some things that they can really use. Because I'm going to tell you something. If you grasp this series, you're going to see such a change in your life because you're going to realize that we have been lied to, we have been deceived, and the reason why we don't have the things that Jesus said that we should have is because we no longer focus on our true identity. Now, Jesus said, you'll do the, the same things that I did. He said that, amen? Are we doing it? Reality? I know the answer for myself. No, I'm not doing everything that Jesus did. I'm trying. But then he said, you shall do greater things than I. Now, number one, how can you do greater than raising the dead? You can't. But when he's referred, when he's saying you shall do great, he's saying you'll do more of what I already did. You with me? All right. Now, now, now watch this with me here. Uh, in Luke 10, verse uh, 19. Behold, in other words, he's saying, I get, he, said, he said, paying attention. I give you power. Now, before I get into this, and, and you know, Pastor Ron, I, I got to get into every word, but I, I got to break this up so you'll have a better understanding. Of it. You're going to see two words in here, and, it's, and the word's the same power, but in the original Greek, it's not the same word, and I'm going to show that to you. It says here, behold, I give you power. That word there, power, in the Greek means authority. So what he's saying is, I'm giving you authority. All right? Now, now, now watch this with me. It, 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 it's it kind of, uh, it, it's, it's like, you know, if, uh, well, you know, like, like when, when Pastor Ron uh, uh, couldn't be here, and all of a sudden, uh, Cricket came in my place. She had the authority behind me. She had the authority behind the God that called me. She had the authority behind Jesus that saved me. She had the authority behind the Holy Spirit uh, that it empowers me. You with me? So there's that authority. So Jesus is now saying, I'm going to give you authority. So what we've got to understand here is, is that we've got something that we're not using or we're not using enough of. All right, now, now stay with me. Watch this as we get into this. He says, I give unto you power, which is authority, to tread on. Now, once again, that word tread in the original Greek means to master. So, what we're seeing here, he says, now, Jesus is saying, I'm going to give you authority to master. All right, now, now, now watch this. It, it says, to tread on serpents and scorpions. Now, he's not literally talking about the little, the, the bugs and stuff of, of serpents and, and, and scorpions. He's talking about demonic activity. Talking about uh, 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 demons and, 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 and things that we have spiritual warfare with. So, pay attention now. What, watch this. Who's got all the authority? God, amen? Jesus is God, Amen? We've got the Trinity. We've got God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. So everything belongs to the Lord. And the Lord is saying to us, everybody say, you and me. He's saying, now, now he said this over 2,000 years ago. So he's saying to us, and see, the church has passed this by. We don't want to teach on this because it's a little bit too deep. We want to teach that we're all saved, we're all going to heaven, we all love each other, hallelujah, ain't life wonderful. But the truth of the matter is, life ain't so wonderful. Because we're still, as born-again believers, we are dealing with poverty, we're dealing with divorce, we're dealing with addictions, we're dealing with everything the world is dealing with, we're dealing with. But what, we've, what we have failed to grasp, because we've had religion, we've had denomination, we've had world system, and we've had the devil himself trying to water down the Word of God because they don't want us to grasp the reality. That's why some of us, we want to be saved, we believe we're saved, 
But we really, in, in the depth of our soul, we don't really believe the Word of God. That's got to change. Because he is now saying to you, over 2,000 years ago, I have given you authority to master over all the demonic activity in spiritual warfare. You with me? That's why I have stood up many times, and even when I was an evangelist, and sometimes when we go travel, and some of my guys go with me, they'll hear me say this, I'm not afraid of the devil. Tell the devil I called him a punk. I don't care. Tell him. Tell him I said he's a low life, no good for nothing punk, and I ain't afraid of him. Amen? Why is that? Because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Amen? Now, see, you got to be careful when you say that. Because if you're not walking in your spirit, man, you're going to be like the seven sons of Sceva, and you're going to have some demonic activity beat your brains out. You with me? All right, now, 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 watch. Because, all right, here, here we go. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself because I'm getting excited. Hallelujah. Watch this now. And, and he says, and over all the power of the enemy. Now, here's that other word, power. Now, in the Greek, that power means the ability. So, catch this. We now have, 2,000 years ago, we have the authority to master over all demonic activity. Now, now watch this. And over all the abilities of the enemy. So, these demonic movies that come out, they're meant to persuade you into believing that the devil is all-powerful. We got the occult. We got, we got uh, Satanists, and we got witches, and we got warlocks. We got all this stuff going on, and I won't go into that. Y'all recall when they all come in here at one time. They were trying to come in here and disrupt this church, and they quit coming because they started getting saved. Amen. Some of y'all were here with us when that happened, amen? How many of y'all were here? Lift up your hand. Amen. See, that's an awesome thing. But now, 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 now what, watch this, because we, we've got this. Now, now, watch this. It says, and nothing, everybody say nothing. I believe that refers to everything. Is that not correct? All right, now, 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 stay with me. You know, I got to keep moving because I want to stay too long in one verse, but I can't help but milk it for everything is God, Amen. Watch this now. And it says, and nothing by any means hurt you. Nothing. He didn't say except for. He didn't say that. He said nothing. So sometimes what happens to us when we get into a spiritual battle or we get into things in the world system where we got to compromise our faith, we get scared of them. But the Lord is telling us, Nothing by any means can hurt you. Now, as you know, like God has a trinity, we're a trinity. We have a body, we got a soul, and we got a spirit. But here's the problem. We know a lot about our body, and religion has taught us just enough to mess us up about soul. But a lot of us don't have a clue about our spirit man. And that's where the power is, is in your spirit man. All right, all right, all right. Now, stay, stay with me. Watch this. It says, and nothing by any means shall hurt you. Uh, notwithstanding in this, rejoice not, but the spirits, but the what? Is that with a little s? Okay, not, now, oh well, I got to move on. I, I'm, about, I'm about to camp out right there. Um, go with me now to Mark 16. So we, we have established now. I, I, see, I, I know what some of you are thinking, and here, here it comes. Because see, your soul, man, is where your mind, your will, and your emotions are. That's kind of like that's your computer. Anything you see 
is registered in there. Any events, anything in your life is registered in there. So sometimes what's happening here is, is when you're hearing things from God and from his word, your body is not going to recognize it. And if your soul man is not trained to the things of God, you're just going to let that pass you by like this. But I'm here to tell you, pay attention. Because you know what? If you are unhappy with your position in life, if you're unhappy because maybe you don't have the things you'd like to have, and, and, and sometimes we get a little bit mad watching Christian TV when people tell us about how, you know, if we just send in our money, we'll be millionaires overnight, and it don't happen. But they get your money, and you get nothing. We get a little unhappy when we hear some of these things, but I'm here to tell you, it's because that we are so focused upon this body and this soul where your mind, your will, and emotions are, that we have neglected our spirit man, and your spirit man is where the power is. Once again, uh, you, you, I'm not going to give you the, the instance, but I'm sure you're all aware of this. It's recorded where some men and people have done some humongous strengths of feet. You, you know what I'm saying? Just, just did something that was out of the ordinary. Live through something that they shouldn't have lived through. I, I recall one instance uh, uh, where this guy was on the Titanic, and when the Titanic went down, you know, it had them, them, them great big tubes on top where the engines were, and, and the Titanic was on its way down, and, and all of a sudden, man, he got, he got in that swirl, and that swirl took him down in one of them tubes. And the only thing he could do was pray to the Lord and, and quote Psalms 93. And all of a sudden, man, that thing shot him out of there. And he ended out there on the water. And he lived. Now, stay with me. But a lot of us gave credit to the body and the soul. That man tapped into his spirit man. And his spirit man is what brought him through. Now, there are things like in war where people have been shot several times and, you know, shot in the head. And, and, and even scientists have proven that man is so much stronger than what we, can, what we can pull out of the body and the soul. They've even admitted there's something there with man that when called upon that, that the body can do superhuman things because whether we knowingly did it or not, we tapped into something that we hadn't tapped into, and that is the spirit man. You with me? All right, all right, all right. Now, now, now. Uh, where was that? What did I say where we go? Mark 16. Okay, good, good. Verse 17. Watch this. And the signs shall follow them that believe. How many believers in here? Raise your hand. Okay, now, here we go. Je How many of y'all know Jesus don't lie? Amen? He can't lie. So watch this now. These signs shall follow them that believe. Now, if we're believers, and we are, everybody say amen. amen. Then there are certain signs that ought to be following us. Watch this. Uh, is this in red in your Bible? That means Jesus is speaking. Amen? Now watch this. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now, count what we're looking at here. Number one, says so they shall cast out devils. In other words, now that we know that Jesus has given us the authority to master over the ability of the devil and his demonic beings, he now backs this up by saying that we now have the power to cast out devils. Here it comes. If you're struggling with an addiction, you're struggling with a demonic spirit. That is a demonic spirit that has lashed hold of your spirit man and has caused your body 
to be addicted, and your soul remembers all these things. That's why, see, we got this whole thing all reversed. God intended for the spirit and to run the show. That's why you remember uh, last Sunday uh, uh, in Genesis 1, I told you God said, let us make man in our image. He's talking about that power, talking about the spirit. God is a spirit. I showed you that as well. Amen? So, but now what happened is, if we neglect our spirit man, then we end up with the body calling the shots. I want a drink. I want some crack. Because our body has been addicted to something, and I, I, I want to lie, I want to steal, I want to cheat, I want to do all these other things that make the body feel good. I want to hurt people because people have hurt me. So now we have reversed God's order, and now we've got the body calling the shots. And the soul man just remembers everything that it's done, and we have neglected our spirit man. Stay with me. Stay with me. You still okay with me? All right, number one, he says, we all, these are signs that ought to follow every one of us. I put myself in this category. That we ought to be casting out devils. We ought to be speaking with new tongues. We ought to be able to take up serpents, and if we drink any deadly... Now, this don't mean that Pastor Ron's going to break out snakes. Ain't happening. <laughs> no, 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 no. And, and we don't make our new guests eat a live chicken till the third service. <laughs> no. Pastor Ron ain't fooling with no snakes. Nope, nope, nope. What this is referring to is that if, if, if any tragedy comes upon us, then all of a sudden we know that we're, we're going to be, it says, it won't hurt you. Now, our body says, yes, it will. And our soul, where our mind is, is saying because it remembers the things in its past, the, the, the soul will agree with the body. But if we haven't trained the spirit man into believing God's word, but if you have, then the spirit man's going to turn around, tell the soul man, you know what, you didn't ask for that, that happened, but that won't hurt you. And then now we got the soul man and we got the spirit man talking to the body. Saying, okay, you were in that motorcycle wreck. Okay, you were addicted. But you know what? According to God's word, you're not addicted anymore because that won't hurt you. But now if you won't believe the body, the body's going to tell you all kind of lies. Because the body is flesh. Once again, while you're looking at me, you have never seen the real Pastor Ron. You've seen his body. The real pastor, the real you is your spirit, man. That's you. You're a good person. I don't care what you've done. You are created in the image of God. You have a spirit, man, that God intended to control everything, but because we've let things get turned around, now all of a sudden our body is telling us and our mind remembers what everybody says about us and we're believing that stuff instead of believing what God wants us to believe. And I'm here to tell you, see, you haven't even seen the real you. See, when we all get to heaven, if y'all want to try to find up Pastor Ron and say, okay, where's that old scarred up Indian? I want to see him. You ain't going to find me. Because I ain't going to look nothing like this. Hallelujah. Amen. And you aren't either. But we're going to know each other by our spirit, man. So the key to all this is all lies in your spirit, man. Because, all right, all right let, let, let me go on here. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to camp out. I got, I, got, I, got, I got to move on. Amen. Watch this now. He says, you'll speak with new tongues. You'll take up servants. If you drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. We ought to be laying hands on the sick. Go Why do you think that the apostle Paul could walk by somebody, and his shadow, not him, his shadow would heal people? 
because he was so involved in his spirit man that he didn't let his body tell him what to do. He didn't let his soul man tell him what to do because his soul man was trained in Judaism. But his spirit man got reborn on the road to Damascus, and now he's full of the Holy Spirit. His spirit man is running the show. Now, unfortunately, there's two. Now, I'm not putting nobody down for this. I just want to lay some things out for you. But unfortunately, there's too many born-again Christians that are not casting out devils, that are not speaking in tongues, that are not healing the sick, that, that, that get worried every time something happens, every time they lose a job, every time something happens, uh, they get a bad report from the doctor. I have heard so many Christians come to me and say, well, Pastor, the doctor gave me this report that I got this disease and I got that disease and I guess I'm just going to die. If you let your body and your soul talk you into that, you're going to go on before your time. But if you'll feed your spirit, man, what does it say? Anything that shall not hurt you. Now, I'm just going to lay out my heart to you today. Pastor Ron is a little tired of seeing God's people addicted, depressed, upset, doing without, doing without proper homes, doing without proper shelter, doing without the things that God has promised us. What's happened to the scripture where the Bible says that my God shall supply all, how many? All, all my needs according to his riches and glory. And you know what? We stand on that and we stand on that and we stand on that. But yet some of us are still hungry. Some of us are still sick. Some of us are still broke, busted, and disgusted. Some of us still got the same problems, the same addictions as everybody else out there. And we wonder why. Because you haven't fed your spirit, man. You fed your soul, man. And you're letting your body tell everything what to do. That's why you're in the shape that you're in. All right, is everybody still with me? All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Glory to God. And some of us, well, anyway, I better not go there. I ought to get in trouble. See, <laughs> as I told you, God's a spirit, right? God created us in his image. God gave us an identity. Okay. That's why the devil attacked Adam in the Garden of Eden. Y'all recall that? Now, now watch this. Oh, God, that's good. He attacked Adam through his body. He said, eat of this fruit. I believe it's talking about the body. Amen? If you'll notice, the devil's got no new tricks. He always goes after the desires of the body. And if your body is running the show, you're going to do everything the devil wants you to do. But if your spirit man's running the show, oh, God, that's good. See, the devil stole the identity. He stole the crown of glory off of Adam because he said, he, he said, the day that you eat of the fruit of that tree, body, tacking through the body, you shall be as God. You shall know good and evil. If Adam had a real clue of his identity, Adam was already just like God. Adam couldn't have been any more like God than what he was at that time, but the devil attacked him through his identity just like he does today with us. You recall when Jesus went into the wilderness and... and, and and the devil, the devil, oh man, that's good too. Where did he attack Jesus? In the body. He was in the wilderness. And do you not notice that's when the devil attacks you? When you're in the wilderness? When you're in the valley? When things aren't going just right? And the devil comes to you and says, okay, where's your God now? And then the devil gives you another option to please the body. But the devil said to Jesus, you know, the Bible says he hungered and thirsted, and that's when the devil come after him, and he came after him once again 
through his body. And he said, if thou be God, turn this rock into bread. The devil knew who he was. He had been with him for eons and eons. But what he was doing was the same trick he pulled on Adam. He wanted to attack Jesus' identity. If thou, if thou be the Son of God. Matter of fact, he said it to him twice. Y'all remember that? And, and, and then he told, took Jesus up to a high mountain and said, If thou be the Son of God, throw thyself off because it is written. See, the devil can quote Scripture. But we got a whole lot of Scripture toting devils out of, oh, I better not say that. But Jesus knew who he was. Jesus, spirit man, knew who he was. That's why he turned around and he told the devil, you know, he spoke to the devil. You know, he didn't carry on a conversation with the devil. He always quoted the word of God. Listen, you get into trouble, quit talking with that fool. Just give him the word of God, right? Listen, the word of God works if you work it. I've had so many people come to me and say, well, I just wish that devil would leave me alone, Pastor. He ain't leaving you alone. He's got you right where he wants you. Why don't you tell that sucker to leave you alone? Because you got to know who, you got to know your identity. You with me, amen? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Matthew, Matthew 16 now, okay. I'm, I'm not going to try to give you a whole lot to overwhelm you. I want you to study this out because I'm about to get into some extremely deep, stuff concerning your spirit man Matthew 16 before this series is over you're going to know and this is the key oh man man he just keeps flowing from the throne that's why that's why the Bible says that when Jesus comes back he's coming back after the church without spot or wrinkle we all got spots we all got wrinkles some of us older than the rest of you got a few more wrinkles that'd be all right Even that, 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 that cream from Max Factor don't help that very much, does it? But grasp this. He's coming back for your spirit, man. Oh, God, it just keeps flowing. That's why it says that we'll be changed in the twinkling of an eye. You got to understand who you are. You are not who your body tells you you are. You are not who you see. Religion has taught us some things about the soulless realm, and some of that has been incorrect because they've tried to teach you that the soul man is everything, and the soul man is not. Once again, the soul man is where your mind, your will, and your emotions are. You with me? Okay, okay, okay. Uh, where did I say go, Matthew 16? Okay, okay. Let's get deep. You ready? Uh, Matthew uh, chapter 16, verse 13. Then Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked his disciples, saying, now pay attention, watch this. Whom do men say that the Son of God am? Jesus is putting on a test. At the same time, he's teaching because he wants them to know about their spirit man. So he's saying, who do men say I am? In other words, now watch this. Who do men identify me with? Now, here, 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 oh boy, that feels good, Lord. You identify with something. Your mama, your daddy, your husband, your wife, your friends, people on your job, anybody that knows you, good or bad, they are going to identify you with something. See, for, for many years, I was identified with being a violent individual. I've been identified as a lot of different things. And, but people will look at you 
and they want to associate you with. Now, let me who do people say you are? And some say, well, you know, I'm a child of the king. I'm, I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. I, I walk in the word. I, I, I just feel with the Holy Ghost. I'm a tongue talker, devil stopping, or Bible toting Christian. <laughs> Woo, that's a mouthful. Well, that's all well and good for your body and your soul, man. Because talk's cheap. If you really want to know, ask people around you that question. Who do you, 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 listen, if you hurt my feelings, that's okay. Just tell, who do you identify me with? What do you, well, you know, you know, um, you know it, it's crack. What? Well, you know, it, it's Budweiser. Well, you know, it's old Jim Beam. What and who? And see, until we can get these things answered, because if you're brave enough to ask people around you, and if they're brave enough to give you the truth, what would be wonderful is they say, listen, I recognize you as a child of God. I recognize you as being full of the Word and full of the Holy Spirit. I have great honor and great respect for you. So who do men say you are? All right, y'all with me? Watch this now. Now remember, I'm not saying all this to hurt your feelings. I'm saying this to wake us up and to show you that we've been walking in something that, that we should have been walking in our, the power of our spirit, man, that we've already been given this to. This is a gift to us. We, we've had the, all of us in this room, you got this gift before you were ever born. You got this power before you were ever born. But yet, because we weren't raised in the revelation of the Word of God, we were raised in a religion, a denomination. Some of us weren't even raised in that. So therefore now our soul man tells us who we are according to what the world said. Well, you know what? You're a college graduate. You got all these degrees and you're something. Somebody, well, you know what? You didn't even finish high school. You ain't nothing. You know what? You got a prison record. You know, you've been a prostitute. You've been this and you've been that. Well, you know what? If you let the world tell that to you, then your soul man is going to start believing it, and your body is going to react to what your soul man takes. But if you'll feed your spirit man, your spirit man is going to tell you who God says you are. Then you get to make a choice. Come on. If you've been a part of this ministry for more than six weeks, you ought to not be taking any kind of illegal drugs and, and prescription drugs that you know you ought to not be taking. Oh, boy, that opened up something. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't take what the doctor has prescribed to you for things in your life. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying this, that we got a society that is eaten alive by, Ill, by, by prescription drugs that you don't need. Oh, boy. Because, see, you've let your body and you've let your soul tell you what to do. You know, uh, I'm just going to say this. When I got healed of drugs and alcohol, I was just shocked at the money I had. I mean, you know, when you've been buying judges and court costs and you've been buying lawyers and bondsmen and, and not counting on missing work, not counting on the drugs, not counting on this, that, and, other, and all that other stuff, that stuff adds up to a whole lot of money. Oh, well, here it comes. And now we get in the church and we don't want to give God nothing. We won't give God a dollar bill. Here, God, here's my tip. You didn't mind giving that pimp all your money. You didn't mind stuffing that $50 bill down. Oh, I better not say that either. Okay, okay. Okay, watch me, watch me. Here, here we go. I got to get back in focus. All right, all right. And they said, some say thou art John the Baptist. Now, all this may be well and good, because at least they didn't say anything bad about him, but they're associating him now with John the Baptist. Some say thou... Thou art John identifying. Some say thou art Elias. And others, Jeremiah, are one of the prophets. Now, catch this. And Jesus turns to them and says, But who 
do you say that I am? That's where we've got to take that same attitude. We've got to find out exactly what people think of us. Oh, that's going to be uncomfortable. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Then Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now pay very close attention. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Everybody say number one. Watch this. Blessed art thou, Simon. Now, what does blessed mean in the Greek? Empowered to prosper. Empowered to prosper doesn't just mean financially. It means in your body. It means in your peace and your joy. All of it is what, is what that means. So now, well, I, I'll, get, I'll come right back to that. Keep that in mind. He said, blessed art thou, Simon, uh, Barjona. Watch it. For flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee. The soul man didn't tell you this. Your body didn't tell you this. So now we've eliminated the body. We've eliminated the soul, man. Watch it. For flesh and blood did not reveal it unto thee, but my Father, which is where? I believe God is what? A spirit? All right. Simon had a spirit man. God speaks to us through the spirit. If your spirit man is not educated in these things, you're going to have a hard time hearing from God. Listen, I hear God tell me some of the strangest things, man. You know what? And I've gotten to the point, I listen. <laughs> there are times I'm going down the road, God said, turn right. I just turn right. I don't know why. And there, there are times when nothing's happened. I said, I don't know what that was for. He said, well, you'll find out when you come to heaven. Amen? All right, now, now, now stay with me. Watch this. He said, uh, uh, For flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven, and I say unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Now, I, 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 got, I got to stop right there. Um, oh, let me think of those words. Oh, yeah, I got them wrote right there. It is good, good, good. Now, stay with me. Uh, okay, he said, and I say unto thee, thou art Peter. He just called him Peter, right? Now, when you look into the Greek, there's a Greek word there called Petros. Thou art Petros. Uh, okay. Petros, the definition of that word, is a piece of the rock. Now, now, hang on, hang on. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show you something. And it says, and upon this rock, that word is uh where, where I got it written out here, right here. I've got it somewhere. There it is. Uh Petra. Okay, now the rock is Petra. Peter is Petros which is a piece of that rock. Let's just use this as an example. This is the rock. And by the way, that rock was revelation knowledge because God spoke to Peter, to Simon, spirit man, which gave him revelation knowledge. The church was not ever to have been built on St. Peter. It was to have been built on Revelation knowledge coming from the Spirit of God to the human spirit. That's what the church was meant to have been built on. Now, this is, uh, what, what did I call it? P Petra, thank you, thank you. This is Petra the rock. Now watch this. This is Petros, which is a piece of that rock, correct? This is still as much a rock because it's the same substance as this. Is that correct? This is Simon. Jesus said, you are now Petros. 
You with me? Now watch this. Because what Jesus was doing was giving Simon revelation knowledge of his identity that you now are a part of this. Stay with me. Every one of you that are born again, you also have a piece of this inside you. You have a piece of revelation knowledge that the church of the living God was meant to be rooted and grounded and founded upon. Now, you need to figure out who you are. You are not Simon. You are now Peter, Petros. And if you know your identity, you can't be moved by your body or your soul. You with me? Okay, 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 okay. We're getting deep in this Presbyterian church. Amen. All right, all right, all right. I, 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 I got to hurry. I got to hurry. Okay, okay. All right, now, watch this with me. Because... Now, you've got to develop your spirit, man, but because you're now part of that rock, and you, what, what would have happened if Simon heard that, and Simon said, well, you know what? I'd be embarrassed if I say that. I ain't saying that. It would have passed him by. So what we've got to do is be openly willing to accept the things that God wants for us, to accept the word of God that you're hearing today. Because that's what's going to grow your spirit, man. And if your spirit, see, the problem with majority of, I'm not even talking about lost people. I'm talking about Christians now. The majority of the problem that's wrong with, with Christian people today is our, our body and our soul are stronger than our spirit, man. That's why we give in to these things. Uh, my Indian people have a saying. They say that you got a black dog and a white dog inside you. And when they get into a fight, which one will win? Anybody know the answer? Thank you. Same thing with your spirit, man. Whichever one you fed the most, whether it's your body and your soul or your spirit, man, when you get into trouble, that's exactly what, 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 what's going to come out of you. Now watch this. Because if you operate, he's going to give us five instrumental things that we ought to be walking in today. Now, I've already read some of them to you before that we ought to be casting out devils, speaking in tongues, and, and laying hands on the sick, and nothing should hurt us. I, all right, let's put that box over here. We got that. Everybody got it? That's yours. Say amen. amen. And to show you how good God is, God said, that's not enough. Do you know I've never asked God for something that God gave me exactly what I asked for? He's always given me more. Because he's a God of more than enough. Now God's given you this that I've already read you. Now get ready. God's about to give you something else. Well, let me rephrase that. He already gave it to you. You're just not aware of it. Watch this. That because you are now part of the Petra, the rock. Watch this. He says, you've been blessed, number one. Empowered to prosper in your body, your soul, your mind, your spirit, financially, health-wise, marriage, home life, everything. He says, I am going to empower. See, if you don't prosper, it's not God's fault. Well, I don't understand why God don't do this for me. He did it for Tommy, did it for, you know, for Shelly and Joe, did it for this, did it for me. God, I don't know why God don't do it for me. Because you ain't developed your spirit, you man, yet, dumb, dumb. You still over here trying, trying, trying to feed your body and your soul. Well, I'm just mad at the whole world. Fine, stay mad, stay broke, stay busted and disgusted. I'm giving you the word of God. If you don't want it, that's your choice. But don't get mad at me because I drive up in the Escalade. Amen. All right. I better be careful. I'm going to make somebody mad. <laughs> stay with me. Okay, okay, okay. Being blessed and power to prosper. Now watch this. Uh, oh, that's good. Watch this. And I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Number two, the gates of hell can't touch you. That's shouting time, right? The gates of hell can't bother you. 
So anything you come against the devil with, the gates of hell cannot block it. You know what that means? That means you got more power than the devil. Oh, man, it's getting deeper and deeper. Stay with me. Stay, stay with me. What was it? And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's number two. And I will give, unless they give, unto thee. Everybody say, that's me. Watch this. The keys of the kingdom of heaven. Okay, watch this. Here's some keys. One of them's to my paid-for house. Hallelujah. Other one's to my paid-for Escalade. Amen. And two of them are to my paid-for motorcycles. Amen. Now, I can't get in my house without a what? I can't start that Escalade without a what? I can't ride my motorcycles without a what? So God is telling you Above everything else he's done for you, he's saying, now, I'm going to give you the keys, plural, to the kingdom of heaven. That means now, oh, man, if you don't get this, this is your fault. I'm preaching my heart out, bless God. <laughs> this means that you, as a child of God, got access to everything that's in heaven. Everything. There's you know, there ain't no enemies in heaven. There ain't no poverty. There ain't no sickness. You ain't gonna get up there and fight. So why are you fighting down here? Oh Jesus, stay with me. Stay. Okay, 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 okay. And I will give unto thee the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And everybody say and. You know as God keeps piling on, God, He is an and God. I'm going to give you this and. I'm going to give you that and. If that ain't enough and, I'm going to give you some more. Amen? And whatsoever that shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Grab it. And there's something going on in your life and surrounding you you're not happy with. God's already given you the key and the right to bind that thing up. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I bind sickness off my body. Now, if I'm not, I believe God's Word. God's Word just told me that I got the key to bind sickness off my body. Is there any sickness in heaven? Then you know what? If there's none up there, we got the keys to unlock that, and we don't got to put up with it here. Is there any poverty in heaven? Then you know what? There's another key we got. But see, we don't want to use that key because that means that's going to cost us something. But the problem is, it don't cost you nothing that God ain't already give you. Uh-oh, stay with me, stay with me. He says... Whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Now watch this. And. Everybody say and. and. I like the ands in the Bible. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Oh boy. Time's up. I'm going to end with this. You got to come back Wednesday to get some more. Whatever you bound on earth is going to be bound in heaven. That is, I'm not talking about your rum dumb body. I'm not talking about that soul man. Your spirit man has got to be developed. If your spirit man is developed, then you're going you're gonna to accomplish what I'm talking about. But you got to grow. You got, you got to feed that spirit, man. Because now the, the Bible says anything that you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Do you not know that the Bible says that the day you were born, you were born with a guardian angel? Do you not know that the day you got born again, washed in the blood of Jesus, 
that God assigned to you, uh, I can't remember the exact number, but it's hundreds of angels. Every one of you that are truly washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, you got a whole army of angels surrounding just you. And some of your angels are unemployed because you ain't using them. Now, oh, I just opened up another can, didn't I? Angels only hearken unto the word of God, not your little whim. If angels hearken unto everything that I wanted, I'd have half a Nashville dead. <laughs> oh, God sent Gabriel and smite him. Just like the film. I mean, smite him, oh, God. But now, if you know the word, you can, you can assign your angels to go forth and loose what is on this earth. Angels, I call forth to bring in the things that I need. I'm a child of God. I fed my spirit, man. I've done the things that God has asked me. Now, angels, I dispatch you. Angels have got to do what you tell them to do. And listen to me. Like I said, we got some of you got so many angels that are sitting on the bench. They ain't doing nothing because you ain't doing nothing. You're not growing your spirit, man. You're not telling your angels the word of God. And therefore, you wonder why nothing ever happens for you because you're trying to. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, oh, God, should I say that? You're trying to jip God. You, God help me. There, there, there's an individual that started uh, a long time ago with this ministry and wanted me to raise this individual up uh, to have his own biker church. And, and I worked with him a while, and he just couldn't stand it. He had to go out and get on his own. And I told him, point blank, you ain't ready yet. He said, well, no, I'm going. I said, well, that you do. God called me to go. I said, no, God ain't called you to go. I'm your pastor. God would tell me first. I'm not trying to manipulate nobody, but I know what's out there in the biker ministry. I know it'll eat him alive. He ain't ready for it. He went out there. It ate him alive. He come back and said, okay, pastor, I repent. I, you're right. I should have stayed. I just did it. Okay, son, here we go. Once again, gone. I'm going to do what God's called. No, no, you done missed it three or four times. You're telling me, you know, you're missing it now, too. And now ain't nothing working for the guy. Nothing's working for the guy. Because this is what happens with a lot of us. We hear the revelation knowledge, but we want to shortcut God. We don't want to do things the way God says to do it. Because you know what? Uh-oh. Boy, I got to get out of this. We live in a, such a fast-paced society of give me now. I want it all now. We don't want to work for nothing. We either want to con it, steal it, or beg for it. In God's system, there's only one way to get what God's got, and that is a word that a lot of us don't like. It's called W-O-R-K. You got to work for it. I got, and I'm in, I swear, it, wow, this is my last closing, I promise. <laughs> You've got as much of God as you want. And if you continue to try to shortchange God, here it comes. What you're doing by your actions, you're telling God, God, I got a better way to do this. I'm going to do this my way because I'm smarter than you, God. And I'm going to do this my way regardless of what anybody else. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it my way. <laughs> Frank Sinatra's dead. Now watch this. But for those that stick it out, it takes time to be taught the things of God correctly. And when you're taught these things, you feed your spirit. You know what? You ought to be taking what I'm teaching you and devouring it on your way to work, your way from home, because I'm giving you something that's going to set you free for the rest of your life. 
It's going to make such a change in you. It's going to be an amazing thing in your life. But you know what? Me nor God are going to make you do anything. Because the Bible says that when you hear the word of God, if your spirit man is not strong, as soon as you leave, the devil's going to come and try to steal the word from you. And then you're going to end up right back where you was. You're going to be turning around and say, well, you know what? I just believe in what Pastor Ron preached last week. What did he preach? I don't know, but I believe it. God, Stand up with me. I'm about to get into something else. Glory to God. 